for the ReCB, the best channel on YouTube. Hello, welcome back to the channel. I have a hammer now. I like it. Now, around two years ago, back when I wasn't really taking this channel seriously and just upload random things every couple months or so, I made a video on the XFL, the alternative football league owned by WWE owner Vince McMahon. I spoke about how it failed in 2001 and how it was being revived for 2020. But when I produced that video, I kind of left it on a thing of, we don't really know what's going to happen next, because at the time, we didn't. So what this video is going to do is just pick up from where that video left off and have a look what happened between then and now. Uh, you can watch that video if you want. It's an alright video, the background music is far too loud and sometimes you can't hear what I say, but overall, it's a good video. So as I said, the XFL is having its big rebirth in the year 2020. I wonder if anything happened in the year 2020 which may lead to the failure of a sports organisation. Let's, let's find out. So we've got 10 teams in the XFL and they're split into the West Division, which is the Dallas Renegades, the Houston Roughnecks, the Los Angeles Wildcats and the Seattle Dragons. And then there is the East Division, which was made up of the DC Defenders, the New York Guardians, the St. Louis Battle Hawks and the Tampa Bay Vipers. The season was supposed to go on for 10 weeks with no bye weeks, so every team would play a game every single week. Once those 10 weeks had been played out, the top two teams of the division would face each other, so you'd have team number one and team number two facing each other in the east, and team number one and team number two facing each other in the west. Then the winner of those matches would face off against each other in their own Super Bowl type game just called the XFL Championship game so you'd have the winner of the East versus the winner of the West to have the overall winner. So on February 8th 2020 at 8 p.m. Eastern Time the XFL officially kicked off for the 2020 season. It was a game between the DC Defenders and the Seattle Dragons. The DC Defenders would go on to win that game 31 to 19 and the game did well in terms of viewership numbers, with 3.3 million people tuning in to watch that game. And it had a good live audience as well. It was played in Audi Field and had an attendance of 17,163. The overall capacity of that stadium was 20,000, but 17,000 is nothing to turn your nose up at. For, to put it into example, Premier League Lacrosse had a championship game in the exact same stadium and only attracted 16,322 people and f the year before the USA official soccer team soccer slash football team had a game there against Jamaica and that game only drew 500 more people than the XFL game did so even though they didn't sell out the stadium the numbers were not bad not by a long shot and the actual football itself was quite good. In terms of overall uh, skill, it was not on the same level as an NFL game, but it was fun to watch and people enjoyed it. And as the weeks would go on, it would appear that the real stars of the XFL were actually in Houston. Each week, the XFL would give out a Star of the Week award, where each they would have one player from each team nominated, then it would go to a fan poll to decide the winner. The winner of the first week was PJ Walker, who was the quarterback for the Houston Roughnecks, and then wide receiver Cam Phillips, also the Houston Roughnecks, would win another three times. So the big stars seem to be there. Uh, PJ Walker as well would go on to hold the record for everything related to a quarterback that could be possibly related to a quarterback for his time in the Houston Roughnecks. As the season progressed, audience live audience numbers would stay relatively steady. Uh, an average game attendance in the XFL throughout the entire season was 18,571, and the very peak of these audience numbers was 29,554, turning out for a week free game between the New York Guardians and the St. Louis 
Battle Hawks, and that was in St. Louis. Although the live attendance numbers were good, the TV numbers did fall, but to be honest, this was to be expected. 3.4 million people watched Fox's first game, but by week 5, a game on FS1 was getting 800,000 viewers. Which, yet again, is a lot lower, obviously, but there was no real cause for concern. If they could have consistently held up 800,000 people, that would have really been seen as kind of a success for this league. But failing viewing figures would not be the downfall of the XFL this time round. In March of 2020, a little thing called the COVID pandemic happened. And on the 12th of March 2020, the XFL announced that all future games would be cancelled. So the XFL this time round lasted officially five weeks. No champion was ever announced for the 2020 season, but we all kind of know it was the Houston Roughnecks. They went undefeated 5-0 and throughout their entire season. They were absolutely the champions of the West Division and probably would have beaten anyone in the East Division too. The East Division is a lot harder to actually decide who the winner is because three of the four teams had a record of three wins to two losses. So that's a lot harder. So if we just all agree they would have lost to the Houston Roughnecks, we can just move on. On April 10th, 2020, the league president announced that the XFL was suspending all operations and all employees would be terminated. And three days after this, the XFL filed for bankruptcy. And part of the deal for the XFL bankruptcy was that Vince McMahon was not allowed to buy the XFL back. And it was decided that the XFL would go to auction unless a buyer could be found. Now on the lead up to the auction there was lots of rumours about different companies that wanted to buy the XFL. Fox was rumoured to have wanted to buy the XFL. ESPN was rumoured. ABC was rumoured. But none of these came to fruition. And mere hours before the auction was about to start, a consortium bought the XFL. Led by... If you smell what the rock is cooking. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And on August 21st, 2020, it became official that The Rock and his consortium owned the XFL. So what's happening now? What happened to the teams and to the players that were playing in the XFL in 2020? Well, let's start with the teams. We don't know. We haven't got a clue. On the XFL website, there's a frequently asked questions bit, and it says uh, what team will be playing in the XFL, and they say they will announce this at a later date. So the teams that we had probably have gone away, and we're going to be starting new ones. Who knows if they'll be in the same location? Who knows? I don't know. No one knows. But what about the players who are playing in the XFL? Well... Since the XFL filed for bankruptcy, 61 of them were signed up by official NFL teams. This included PJ Walker, the quarterback of the Houston Roughnecks, who was actually the second person to be signed up from the failure of the XFL. And also, free time star of the week, Cam Phillips also got signed uh, to the Carolina Panthers in August, even though he was released by the Panthers not too long after, and I think is now playing in the Canadian League. And speaking of the Canadian League, an additional 69 players from the XFL were signed up by Canadian Football League teams. So overall, the XFL have zero teams, and 130 players who were playing in the XFL are now in the NFL or the Canadian Football League. And the XFL has announced zero players at all. They have announced, as of today, when I'm calling for this actually, they've announced eight coaches for the football teams that don't exist, but but no players as of yet. But what they have alongside the coaches is a brand new logo. And you know, they've released this logo, it's very slick, it's very nice, it's very modern, I'm sure nothing can go wrong with just announcing a logo. So a company focused on uh, women in the sporting industry have filed a cease and desist order on the XFL and their new logo as they say that their logo is too similar to the logo that they already have. So the new logo is not going too well. But there is a silver lining in this very dark cloud in the shape of the XFL logo because what the XFL lacks in teams, players, 
non-illegal logos they have made up in merch. Now if you have seen my previous XFL video, you will know that the XFL have always loved their merch and they love it here as well because you can get a black t-shirt, a white t-shirt, tree blend t-shirt, a silver t-shirt, a long sleeve t-shirt, a free quarter length sleeve t-shirt, a possibilities black t-shirt, a possibilities white t-shirt, a woman's relaxed t-shirt, a woman's relaxed black t-shirt, a youth unisex t-shirt, a logo hoodie, a grey hoodie, a black hoodie, a woman's black hoodie, a woman's white hoodie, a youth unisex hoodie, a mesh black hat, a performance black hat, a performance white hat, a 920 black hat, a flex fit black hat, and a knitted beanie hat. All those can be yours, with a logo on it that they might not be able to use legally. So they have announced that in February of 2023, the XFL will start again. And if you follow their Instagrams and social media and stuff, they're announcing things all the time, apart from, you know, teams. It's all very, like, behind-the-scenes stuff. Like, oh, this man is the vice president of flags in the XFL. And everyone goes, oh, right, okay, welcome to that man. It's that kind of thing. And you know what? I just hope they do well. I'm very invested in the XFL story at this point. And, you know, the twists and turns it's been on. I just want them to do well. And if they want to be competition to the NFL, which I personally think is a long, 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 long way off, but if they do, what they should do is do the thing that the NFL have kind of been promising to do for a while, kind of tipping their toe in, dipping out all the time. The XFL should announce an official XFL UK football team. What? And you know, now The Rock owns XFL, he's good friends with Ryan Reynolds. And Ryan Reynolds knows better than most, the best place in the UK to have a sports team is Wrexham Town. Yes. So that's what The Rock should do. If you want to beat the NFL, announce the UK XFL football team. Call it like the Wrexham Winnebago's. That's what I'd call him. You know, like the, the RV camper vans, aren't they called? Winnebago's. Yeah. Or, or Windigo. They're like those weird, demented people that live in forests. That could be quite fun. Or another thing beginning with W. Not that one. Another one. The Wrexham Winners. <laughs> it's called, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would call them. Yeah. Leave in the comments what you would call the Wrexham-based XFL team. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be something beginning with W. Alliteration's fun, but it doesn't have to be. You know, it could be the Wrexham Dragons. You know, simple but effective. And if you're going to go for a word of W, not that one. That's too rude. Think of the children. So that's all we've got time for on this week's video. I hope you have enjoyed. Uh, join me in two years time when I do another XFL update video. Who knows, I might even do one sooner this time. Uh, you know, I just do what I like. Join us next week, we'll do something else. Oh, such fun. Bye bye! <laughs>